Okay, last week in science, we did an experiment that involved using a black box. And we're going to continue our study with models and designs. I would like you to spend a couple minutes discussing who's going to do what roles today with your group. So discuss who's going to be lab reader, lab reader assistant, gopher, taskmaster, presenter, floor monitor. We were talking about the problem and of the day and I would like you to look up here at the chalkboard and as you can see we have two problems written on the board and I kind of squeezed the, those two questions into one problem on your lab sheet. Um, Santiago, will you please read the questions that are up on the chalkboard, please. Can you draw the model of the, an un, unseen object? Can you identify an unseen object? Unseen it has yellow underneath it. What does unseen mean? You don't know what it is. Okay, you don't know what it is. It, it, you can. You've never seen it before. You've never seen it before? Or you have seen it before, you just don't know because it's wrapped up or something. Last lab we talked about the definition of a model and I thought it would be a good idea if we reviewed it for this lab. So I would just, I'm just going to read it to you. A model is an example of something real. A model is created as accurate and complete as possible and a model can always change and that's very very important I want you to remember that today when you're working on a model that it can change when I think of models I think of model cars model airplanes and fashion models models are used in science there are I can make models of the solar system the water cycle and atoms I can't see or touch these things so I have to make models to understand them how would you use this model to learn about an atom? What we're talking about today are really important to this lab. One of the first key terms has to do with being an engineer. My mom is a civil engineer. She, she uses a lot of math and science and models to help her um, figure out how big and how long and tall the roads and bridges should be. Engineers use a lot of ideas from science to help them solve problems. Sometimes they use ideas to build models. This helps them to find answers to their problems. Models can save them time and money and help them do a better job. Besides engineers, who else uses models? You're going to be engineers. You're going to construct in your mind what you think is inside a clay ball that you can't see. You're going to construct a model. And engineers do a lot of constructing and they do a lot of drawings of models. Models don't have to be something you have you pick up with your hands or see with your eyes. Models can be drawn on paper. Models are not always things, sometimes numbers, but they're still helpful to understand a system better. Okay, centimeters. What's a centimeter? Uh, not the inches part of the ruler, but across from the inches. Okay, not the inches part of the ruler, but across from the inches part of the ruler. This Good. Part. It's a way to measure. Okay, it's a way to measure. Anything else? Any other ideas? This thing is a few centimeters long. Okay, everybody grab a ruler. And I'd like you to show me where the centimeters are on the ruler. Right here. Okay. On the left side. The most important part of making a model is to make careful observations and careful measurements. This way, the model can help me understand. Measurements are important because when I make a model, I have to know how, to, how the parts fit together. No matter how much a model looks like the real thing, it never is. It's less than reality. What does it mean to infer in science? Something like you think of. Okay. Good, Stephen. Anybody else? Inferences are like guesses, but they're based on collected information. Okay. 
I think inferences help us to explain our observations. For example, no one has ever seen a real-life dinosaur, but scientists make inferences from fossils about how they lived. This way we may know that a dinosaur with big, sharp teeth probably ate meat, even though we would never see a real one. When I hear the principal call my name over the loudspeaker, I observe my name, but I infer that I'm in trouble. On here we have the material list, and Tiffany, would you please um, read aloud what the materials are for the lab today? One, can, one clay ball, one toothpick, pencil ruler. And then for the team to use, what does the team get to use? Balance, scale, and weights. Weight. Does everybody at this table understand what the word collaborate means? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what does it mean to collaborate? Is it, am I collaborating if Stephen and I are in this group and just Stephen and I are just talking together about the lab and about our investigations? Are we collaborating with everybody? Yeah. Mm, yeah. No. no. Not with no. everyone. Not with everyone? No. Okay, so what would we have to do to collaborate with the rest of the group? What would we need to do? I'll need to talk about our ideas. So everybody would get a chance to share their ideas? And then we just push them together into one big idea. That's a pretty good definition of collaboration. It helps us get the job done. We can either share one job or each do a different one. Collaborating on projects helps us to do better jobs than if we worked all by ourselves. It helps us to talk about our ideas, how we can make inferences, from our observations. Having more than one point of a view can be very helpful. Sometimes, though, I disagree with my partners. In that case, we don't fight about it. Instead, we try to decide whose idea makes the most sense. Like when we make observations, if we all make measurements, we have a better chance of getting an accurate measure. If someone is inaccurate, we can find, we can find out before it's too late. Before we were talking about inferences, and I'm not still sure everybody understands what an inference is. So I'd like to give this group an example. If you came into the classroom today and you saw this at your table, what would you think? Maybe someone doesn't know how to clean up after themselves. I observe that there's half a cookie on the table. What I infer is what made it that way. It could be that the cookie was just broken in two. Someone ate half a cookie. A dog ate the other half? Maybe it's part of a science experiment. To make the best inferences, we have to carefully collect information. It's like collecting clues at a crime scene. Okay, Santiago, you need to go get the materials for your team. You see, I need a clay ball. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Can Steven read the Can you identify and or draw a model of an unseen object wrapped in a clay ball? You must identify the object without removing the clay. Aria, do you think you can do it? Yeah. I don't, I don't think either. <laughs> the first things we should do is make some careful observations with lots of detail. Once we made our observations, then we could infer what's inside the clay balls. First, I'd have to shake the ball, then listen to see if there's anything inside. I put the clay in a bucket of water. If it's light, it will float. I can use a magnet to see what the object inside is metal. All these observations help us make better inferences. This gives us, and this gives us a better chance to help figure out what's inside. What did you feel, Ariel? I think my mind just went all the way through. I don't think I got anything. My one. If I feel the toothpick going here and here and here, then I know a few things about the shape of the hidden object. 
It gives me clues about the size and shape of the object hidden inside. So even though I can't say for sure, I can use my information and the information from my partners. That way we can collaborate and come up with the best possible description for something we can't see. Yeah. Okay. It must have something heavier. And a shape. What kind of, what shape do you think yours is? Shape. I think lines is a circle. What do you think, Ariel? Sphere. Unless I make careful observations, I might I might not be able to figure out what's inside the ball. How about you? Mine changed two times. For number one and two, it stayed the same, but for number three, it was different, and for number four, it was different. It's impossible to know what's inside without opening it up. But the data helps us make better and better inferences, and this helps us make a better and better model. <laughs> okay, yeah. what so far, have you changed any ideas Ooh. about what might be inside that clay ball? Mm -mm. I think it's a penny. Now you think it's a penny? <laughs> Why do you think now it's a penny? Because it feels kind of flat. Pushing toothpicks inside the clay ball helps us figure out how big the object is and how hard or soft. What do you think? A coin. Coin? What do you think? A coin. Coin. What do you think? Coin. Coin. Okay. Why do you think it's a coin? Because it's kind of, it feels kind of flat and you? hard. I think, I think because it's flat to the coin. How about you? Mm. Think it's a rock? No. Think it's a coin? Yeah. Um, I thought you just said it was a rock. Thought you just changed my mind. <laughs> it feels like kind of like a circle inside. Okay. But a coin is not a circle kind of way. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It's circle. Like that. It's okay, flat. forget it. <laughs> this is what is inside the clay ball. That's a man. We're gonna wrap, unwrap it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> they broke. Okay. Mine is a dice. So is mine. So Mine's is too. mine. So is mine. So is mine. <laughs> it's a dice. Well, we was all wrong. Yep. But that's At okay. least we had good guess and stuff, except me. But no, you had a better guess because I mean, it's, you said like it was like round. sort of three dimensional, a marble. But you and, said it was flat. But this is so. This is three dimensional. It's a cube. Sometimes this stuff can be confusing. Like if I push the toothpick in from another side, the flat side of the penny, it might miss every time. That's why it helps to collect lots of data and get it from as many places as possible. That was really good. Do you see how difficult it is for scientists, though? Do you see how hard this is for them to figure out what is inside an unseen object? It's very difficult. Inferences made use of the observations in different ways. Everyone agreed that it was hard and had a flat side. But when Tiffany collected data from another position, it helped her to create a better model because she had more information. She figured out from the toothpick pokes that was thicker than a coin. Since some of our guesses are better than others, it's, impor it's important to base our model on observations and inferences, not guesses. From these observations and inferences, we can create a model to help us understand even better what is going on.